reason that he does that is because he is a scholar who did a lot of his research on what the policies were adopted by the Fed were during the Great Depression. And I think, although I'm putting words in his mouth, that uh, one of the reasons why you had such a liberal financing policy today is because Bernanke said, I'm not making that mistake again. Okay? So, that was, so that's why I don't talk about that period here, because it's not really clear that the, just having a Fed by itself, if the Fed doesn't lend, that's not helpful. Right? That's, you might as well not have one. Uh, remember what uh, he said at Milton Friedman's birthday party. He said, you know, we made some mistakes, and we will never do that again. So oh, I, he don't said, know, I don't know what that was, but I, the most people took it to be, yes, uh, to be so passive in, 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 in the face of uh, such a yeah, That's right. You're, you're, you're what right. do you mean by that? Because of, during that time, out of the five banks, two banks collapsed. Oh. Out of five banks, United States collapsed during that period. That is the main reason that that's why he said that. Though. I don't want to remember that kind of period again. Yeah, it's not so obvious to me that having the banks fail is necessarily a bad thing, although it turns out in the current crisis it was kind of a bad thing. Uh, but the, but uh, you know, the situation today is a little bit different from what it was in the, even in 1929, because there you had kind of a sense of the value of the assets on the books, and now you kind of don't. So it's, there's a lot more uncertainty today in what's going, what's going on than I think there was in 1929. 1929, I think what, in the 1930s, I think what the... Uh, what, what the U.S. government did was it actually allowed some, it took over some banks, and other banks, it, it just, it, it helped them out. It, I'm sorry Mark Weidmeier's not here, because he knows a lot more about exactly what the policies that were pursued during the Great Depression were, he actually knows. Whereas I know, like, about that much. As it should be probably clear from my answer to the question. Yeah? Yeah, the late 20s was an agricultural recession in the U.S. So hundreds of country banks were failing every year. Uh, and it was very likely, as you suggested, I would, yeah, I think that's right. I think Myron notes that. It, that, that that's. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's consistent with what you're saying: recovery of having a spike in interest rates in September. Yeah, it's sort of. Yeah, it's, you think they would have? I, I, I guess nobody. You know, the thing is, that macro economists, when, when when we started talking about this at lunch at CMC, and the macro economists were there. They say, "Why do we care about volatility?" Is what they are, and, and so I, you know, what do you do? Well, at least the, the financial economists cared, which was good for us. Even if the the, uh, the macro guy said, Ugh, "Forget it," and you can sort of see that if you look at the tests in the literature, it's all on mean, you know, mean interest rates. But that's not, at least we didn't think that was what what the important thing uh, was. Yes. Yeah, Just uh, this is a question out of interest. But could you look at Pennsylvania, particularly Philadelphia data, for the period uh, of the first bank? Because uh, uh, it was a big Pennsylvania bank that became the heir of the first bank. And That's, there must have been an interaction between the first bank and you, you know, you might. That's right. Because Nicholas Biddle, who's the guy who basically ran the second bank, he, was, he came from a big uh, Philadelphia. I don't remember which one. But he came from a big Philadelphia bank. So yes, perhaps. But I, but I don't know what Philadelphia banking had to do necessarily with the first bank. I mean, you say that, that the Philadelphia well, banking... Bank was the equivalent of New York today. That's, no, that, no, that's right. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I just don't know if it was the, how that, what the relationship so between that and the first bank of the United States was. Just, just a suggestion. You yeah. want to poke around in that. No, that's... The other question I would have is, have you looked at the London money market? Because of oh, the very good question. So, in fact... <laughs> We have indeed looked at it. So we didn't do everything you'd, you'd want. So what I had over the summer what I had was I had a student. I wanted to see whether these crises, these financial crises, actually propagated through uh, Europe as well. Because after all, everybody's on the gold standard at the same time. So you might expect that gold is going to move, it, over time, gold is going to move to where it's most valuable. And you'd think that the shocks would also propagate. In fact, they do. But that's, that might not. So that's all we've done to look so far, is we've looked to see whether you see uh, shocks in asset market volatility in, in terms of London, interest rates in London. And they, they're, they're. Hamburg and Vienna are, are players in this period. I, There's a whole lot of echo of that. Yes, that's right. So the question is, where is it? So London, there definitely is some. We, we have this data called the global financial data now that we bought. Uh, and 
Some of the data is better than others, than other the data series there. So some of them, you look at them, you see it's just junk. And some of them looks like real data, and we did test some of that. So we tried Germany, uh, and uh, it didn't work so well. But it does, it's not so obvious that the German data is really very good. We don't, we don't know. You know, it's all secondary sources. So really, to do it right, you have to go to some newspaper and, and, dig, out the, and dig out the data on interest rates, because that would be the data that you would really need. Whenever we need data in the US, we always send some student over to look at the, uh, to, to look, usually it's the New York Times that you go back to, and then you, you grab data from there. Uh, sometimes it's the Commercial Financial Chronicle, which you can also go to. One thing I think is wonderful is that actually the library, that, the library that we all share here, is really, really good for history. So that you, you can actually, you don't, you're not always going out and having to borrow from uh, other libraries. But that's what we've done, which is not clearly not enough. But were we to say, write a paper on uh, on what was going on in Europe, we would have to uh, do more. I have to have my students. There's somebody at Oxy who's playing around in this area. I had to review the stuff. It seems to me that she had worked in the German and Austrian data, you might want to talk to her. Oh, okay. All right, so that's worth uh, more. Oh, I have a Thank you.